What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with my Bell Collective Season 1 Reunion Part 2 review. But before I start, I have some behind-the-scenes tea for you guys. So, one of you guys sent me this. Um, can't remember who sent it. So sorry. But um, it was uh from Latrice, uh, not Latrice, from Marie's Instagram page. She posted screenshots of text messages um, re deal, uh, regarding Hairgate. So in the um text messages, it's uh the first one is uh text is between Marie and Latrice. And Latrice says, What was your inches again? Marie says, Hey love, what time do you want me to come through? Uh 20 inches, 18 inches, and one lace front. Latrice says, Got it. Marie says, Thanks, sweetheart. I'm on the way. Latrice says, Okay. And then you see Latrice said, did you get anyone to do your wig? I have the perfect person. So the Michael Scissorhand dude, the one that did the wig, you see a, a text message conversation um, that says uh, from him, the Michael dude, I had a feeling that you felt like I switched your hair. I have no, I have to, I have two reason to, you know, I think he said, um, he meant to say, I have no reason to take care from anyone. And if Treese told you that's not her texture hair, then I would tell her to tell Face that it is the hair you had was a goddess wave, which means the wave will not permanently stay in the hair after one shampoo. The wave in the hair is completely gone. Your wig was the last wig I made on Thursday night. I had no other hair to even switch it out with. I have never had an issue with someone thinking that I took something from them or even switched their hair. So then you see a text message conversation between some girl named Taisha Stewart and Latrice. Taisha says, hey, Michael, saying he's going to contact you. I refer Tisha and Marie to buy hair from you so they could rep your hair on the show and the hair Marie have is horrible. I just talked to Mike and he said he didn't switch the hair and I told him something happened because I've never seen hair that bad from you before. I just want it rectified because I referred her to you and to him and I feel so bad for her. Latrice says, hey girl, that's awful. I felt so bad. I'll replace the hair. It's no problem. I really don't know if it's been switched. I never heard of him switching hair. So maybe it's just one of those things. And then the girl says, thank you. And then it's another uh, message from the Michael dude that says, I will talk to Latrice myself because I know that I did not switch her hair. I would never do anything like that to anyone in all my years of doing hair. I've never had anyone to say I sold their hair. I will personally talk to Latrice myself. So Latrice got on TV and act like she didn't know Marie, didn't know what the hell was going on. None of this stuff. Child, like, why front when the text messages prove that you were just like, you know what, I feel bad, let me replace the her, this, this, that, and the third. What I got out of this reunion is that Latrice is a fucking liar. Dude, Latrice is a goddamn liar. She likes to throw rocks and then hide a goddamn hand, child. Hold on, it's an Amber Alert, child. So that's what I got from Latrice. Um... Also, the blogger that's been in question, this is the fella right here. Um, and come to find out why he telling everybody else, see, uh, this blogger, William Edwards, who conspired with Latrice, her minions to try and take down, uh, this is what the post says, the cream, Queen Marie, he was charged with embezzling a church out of money. Child Jesus, the Christ everybody needs to go and sit down somewhere child um so let's get on to the uh, review so marie says you know uh that they talking about Antoinette, kaylin and latrice she says they released an audio between this blogger and kaylin all three of them went to this blogger to destroy me kaylin says i knew this information back in september Egypt was like, Kaylin, you admittedly went to this blogger and leaked information about Marie. Kaylin says, I went to gather inf information for myself. He was exposing information I heard about Marie. I knew Marie was going to come at me hard and I knew he was going to come and I knew she was going to come at Latrice hard. I told Antoinette I was meeting with him and Antoinette told Latrice. My thing is, 
you don't know how to read a bitch that you got to go and find out information on them to make them look bad. Like, I know how to read a bitch just from her head to toe, just from her conversation. I don't have to dig up nothing against you to read your ass for filth. So the fact that you even go to that level says a lot about that white devil. I told you that bitch was the devil from day one. Um, I just don't like it. I don't like the three of them hoes on that couch. They all shicey to me. So Latrice and Antoinette say, it wasn't us that went to the blogs. And Kaylin says, no. Latrice is like, I told you don't do it. And Kaylin's like, she did. Um, but the fact that you're even still cool with somebody that would do something like that says a lot about you at the end of the day. Her and Antoinette. So Letitia was like, Latrice came to me with some information. Somebody said Glenn is supposed to have a baby. It's one of the ladies he had an affair with. And each of like, so there is a baby. And Letitia's like, there is a baby. Marie falls out because Marie is shocked by all of this. Now, at the end of the day, none of this baby stuff gets resolved. And we'll talk about that later on in this review. So we don't know if Glenn got a baby, if he don't got a baby, what in the hell is going on? Jesus, I need information. So Tisha was like, three or four days later, it's in the blogs. Glenn is upset, calling Howard Heward. I'm upset. Latrice was like, it's not me. It was Kaylin. She clicked over and called you, and I heard y'all whole entire conversation. Girl, what in the seventh grade is going on? So Kaylin looking at Latrice like, really, bitch? I thought we was on the same team, and you calling me on three-way with a hoe exposing me? So Latrice was like, I didn't say it was Kaylin. <laughs> See, Latrice is a mess. Kaylin was like, it was messed up what he said about you to Tisha. And Egypt was like, but it was okay for him to go after Marie. And Kaylin was like, well, Marie is still in federal money. So I was okay with that. Girl, Marie should have got up and leaped on her ass because I'm sick of this bitch. That bitch is Satan in a goddamn blue dress. So Marie was like, I've been in business almost 20 years. If I was doing anything fraudulent, do you think the feds will let me get away this long? And I agree with that. Like, come the fuck on, people. Egypt was like, I hardly think if you were doing anything illegal, you would then go on television. Well, we've seen it happen before. We've seen Teresa Judice and her husband over committing crimes while they on a whole goddamn nationally syndicated damn reality show. We've seen Mandisi's ass come on a reality show knowing he a goddamn kingpin. People will do it. Fame is a hell of a drug. So she was like, do you ladies really believe what you've read in the blogs? Marie was like, you know why? Because they know I'm successful. Latrice was like, I don't care about those stories. Marie was like, I'm not talking to you. Every time Marie told that lady she wasn't talking to her, Latrice didn't know what to say, but I'm talking still, honey. <laughs> like, Latrice can't read for nothing. So, uh, Marie was like, um, nothing can stop what God has for me. And I was like, you better say it. So, Egypt's like, do you have a police record? Marie says, no. Egypt says, is there any truth to you stealing funds? Marie was like, I'm a government provider. Do you think the government isn't coming to my office and auditing, auditing my medical files? It's slander, which it honestly is. And she, if none of this stuff is true, then she needs to sue this blogger and she needs to sue Kaylin ass. So, Kaylin was like, I did it to gather information in case she came after me. In case. Really, girl? Like, she need her ass beat. So Tamara was like, Kaylin was wrong. I did sympathize with you. Now, after hearing everything, the fact that you would go to the extent to break another woman down, I don't sympathize with you at all. Kaylin was like, I wasn't trying to break her down. I was just trying to get information for the defense, not the offense. Girl, the fact that you would even go to those links, girl, just to, like, try to hurt somebody and expose them. Like, for what, girl? What are you gaining out of that? Like, once again, like, her, she needs to be exposing you and your racist ass fucking family that own slaves and shit. That's what she needs to be fucking doing. So, and that's real tea. That ain't no read. That's real honesty. A real honest tea. So, Antoinette was like, do you think I tried to ruin your business? And Marie was like, I'm going off the receipts. Um, I don't think that Antoinette was like fishing for anything, but the fact that you and Latrice knew what Kaylin was doing and didn't do anything about it and still was riding with her says a lot about y'all character to me. I just can't see past that. So the husbands come out, Glenn up there looking like he going homecoming, child. He looks so goddamn country in that blue and black suit with that bow tie. Cedric looked like he going to a tax convention. And Howard, you were looking like he just left somebody repass. Everybody looked a mess. 
So Egypt asks Marie is how things are with her son right now. And she says that she had never seen him explode like that um, ever before. Cedric says, uh, you know, me and Marie have a non-traditional relationship. And Marie says that they never got married the second time around. Their intent was. So I was like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for that covering. So Cedric says that he invited Marie to Aruba, but she said no. Marie says when she got sick in 2016, she expected him to slow down on all the traveling and doing things, but he wasn't there for her. Um, and so she was like, tell the truth, like tell what was going on. Cedric, however, does not want to answer this question. For what reason? I don't know. We already know he's the doll. But he was like, no, nah, no, nah, you the headliner. I ain't going to come in between what you and Egypt got going on. And everybody cracking up laughing because he's funny. And he was like, first of all, I just like to thank the Lord for allowing me to be here. I just want to tell you where you started to where you are now. I'm just in awe of your growth and your tenacity and your stick to itness. Your stick to itness. This nigga then created a whole word stick to itness. In spite of what you go through, he says that he was there for Marie. Marie starts to cry and shakes her head like, nigga, no. And I'm like, why are you still letting this nigga make you cry? Like, that nigga know he wasn't there for you. So Cedric's like, Marie, I love you from the bottom of my heart. We have a beautiful daughter, and I love you unconditionally. And Egypt was like, you know, is there any chance y'all get back together again? And Marie says that she's seeing someone else and doesn't really know. I was like, the fact that you even saying you don't know, Marie, you need to get kicked in that big ass back of yours. The fact that you even say, I don't know, like, what about this nigga do you like? Like, y'all like the same shit, girl. Like, what? You like dick, he like dick. But you like dick and pussy, but he likes dick. Like, what about him? Do you want? Like, no. No. He like a deacon at a Baptist church. Girl, sit down. He's a tambourine player. So, um, Egypt brings up Essie. And Cedric says they already had a marriage going on before he even came into the picture. So Sedge moves seats <laughs> once Essie come out. Essie come out, child, looking like a circus conductor. All she needed was the hat. I hated her outfit. It was half businesswoman, half showgirl. I don't know where the fuck she was going, but I didn't want to attend whatever party it was. Um, Cedric says there's no room for building a relationship with Marie because she and Essie, her and Essie's bond is just so strong. Um, Egypt asked Essie, does she like Marie in a sexual way? And she says, no, that she has a husband. And I was like, well, God damn it. I, 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 I love my best friends, but God damn it. Y'all take best friends to a whole nother level. Now, do I think that my best friends are my soulmates? Absolutely. 100%. I have a soul bond with Losha and Monique, but, uh, uh it ain't getting in the, between me and no dick. <laughs> like, no way. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 no. So, and I was shocked to find out Essie got a nigga. Shit, you couldn't tell me ex Essie wasn't a lipstick dyke. A lipstick, <laughs> lipstick gas blast bit. I just got there doing my walk and Tammy review. Uh, you'll get it when you watch it. Uh, so Howard Hugh was like a woman got to choose her mate over her friend. So Egypt asked Cedric, is he gay? And he says no. Egypt says that they got clarity earlier on the baby situation with Glenn. And I was like, when? There was never no clarity there. There was, she said that there was a baby. Unless they edited something out that we didn't see, we never found out, is it his baby? So maybe that's going to be their storyline next season. But I need to know the answer to this question. Um. So... Tisha says that the reproposal reproposal thing was him saying that he was over their past situations and that when he was finally over all the past hurt, that he would propose to her again so they could start anew because, you know, he cheated on her and she had, you know, uh, affairs with other men as well, not sexually, but she entertained other men and he couldn't get over, you know, how niggas are, they can fuck other bitches and do what they want to do. But as soon as you do something to them, they act like they've been shot in the ass. 
So um, we find out that Cliff has four sons that are in their 20s and a 16-year-old daughter from a previous marriage. The 16-year-old daughter lives with him and Latrice. And I was like, why didn't we get that on this season? Like, what's going on with that? Did they just not want to be on the show? Did their mom, did the girl mama say no? I want to know what's going on with that because Latrice did not want to give us her age. Um. She looked like she probably about 32, something like that. Like, my thing is, she come up, she she acts ashamed of their age difference. Like, if you married this man, y'all been together for 10 years, stand in that shit. So the fuck what? Who gives a fuck about how old you are that you damn near could be his daughter? You fucking him. You married to him. Get over it. So, um, he says that he did not fund her business. Um, Latrice does want a child someday. Uh, Marie, at this point, the husbands go off stage and all the other girls come back. Marie says Antoinette follows suit and doesn't have a mind of her own. Antoinette was like, it's Dr. Antoinette when you refer to me. Girl, I hate when people do that shit. Girl, I don't give a fuck about you being no goddamn doctor. You could be the president of the United States. It ain't got shit to do with nothing, girl. Sit the fuck down. So Antoinette was like a, a person with a mind of, that doesn't have a mind of their own, just built her own practice. Do you not know what having a mind of your own means? That means you following behind other people. That don't mean that you can't start a goddamn business. That means that you listen to what other people say. So Antoinette says that she's uncertain where she and Letitia are. That's why she didn't invite her to her little housewoman thing or whatever. Letitia was like, y'all came with shade. Latrice was like, no, you guys came with shade, honey. I was like, I need for her to stop saying honey like this, really reading somebody. Tisha was like, Latrice, let me finish because you bright because you bring different energy when Cl when Cliff was here. Now, uh, when Antoinette is here, you turn into a mean girl. You gotta let me know. Are you team Tisha or are you team Stratum? And there was a major difference from when Cliff was out there on the stage and when Antoinette was out there on the stage. Like when Antoinette is around, she got a battery in her back or something. Cause you can tell Latrice ain't about that life. Latrice is See, Latrice seemed like she was a cute girl growing up, but she probably didn't really stick up for herself like that. She just doesn't seem confrontational. She seems like she's trying to be hard, but that's just not who she is as a person. So Latrice is like, baby, I'm team me. And Latisha was like, now we just had a great energy. I need you to be the same person in my face when this person, me and Antoinette, is here or not. I haven't had anything against you. What I had against Antoinette is that she was flirting with my husband, just like she was flirting with yours. And this when everybody was like, what the fuck is going on here, ma'am? This should have been in uh, episode one, because episode uh, reunion part two was way better than episode uh, reunion part one. So Antoinette was like, excuse me? When was I flirting with your husband? Tisha was like, at the sip and see of her practice, I'm in the car and I'm like, what's going on? Where is Glenn? I walk in and she's holding his hand and was like, I was just giving him some Hennessy. So we got in the car. I'm like, Glenn, what was that about? And he was like, I don't know. It didn't feel right to me. So I called Marie. Glenn and I had a major situation afterwards. So, you know, her being a woman that's dealt with infidelity with her nigga in the past, she was probably like, what the fuck is going on here? Um, I don't push it past nobody. Really, I don't. Um, and at first, I would have said that Antoinette ain't checking for Glenn. But when Egypt asks, well, what is this about you saying that she was flirting with Cliff? Latrice says it wasn't what it was. We were all drunk and my husband sometimes gets his words misconstrued. Me and my husband asked her about it and we got through it. Tisha says, Latrice, are you being serious right now? So at this point, that's when I'm putting two and two together that they have been on the phone kicking. And Latrice is like, yeah, she's shady. Watch her around your nigga. I had an incident with her, with my nigga. Mm-hmm. Co-signing what Latisha was feeling. Um, so Antoinette, however, denies anything with either of the girls' husbands. Latrice, however, does not believe her. Latrice says, when me and Latisha, I mean, I'm sorry, Latisha says, when me and Latrice are on the phone and we're vibing, it's totally different. Marie can vouch for this. I went to bat for you, but I need you to do the same for me. Meaning, when me and you are on the phone, you one way, you be talking about this hoe, 
And even when you and my girl was going through it, I still vouch for you with her. But now that I'm telling the truth on your girl, you not being real and saying what you said to me on the phone. And this is why I can't vibe with Latrice because she's two-faced and she doesn't like to tell the truth. She's a liar. Um, child, I, I hope we get a season two. I'm pretty sure we will. Um... Overall, I give the first season of Bell Collective an A. I really enjoyed it. I feel like he brought a new perspective on the reality show for five girls, you know, whole recipe. Um, we got new storylines. I feel like we have a good enough base to go into a season two. I need to know more about Glenn's uh, baby. I need to uh, know who uh, Marie New Nigga is. Um, I need to know more about Cliff's kids. Um, how do they feel about Latrice? Um, I need for Latrice to start telling the truth. I need for Letitia to get a new stylist and a new hairstyle. Um, I need for Essie and Marie to just come out with their truth. <laughs> um, I need for Cedric to live in his lights and come out the closet. Um, and I need to find out what's going on with Antoinette trying to fuck everybody, nigga. What the fuck is going on with that? And Tamara, as you can see, didn't even think about her. She needs to go. They need to bring somebody else in. She just didn't really bring it for me. She didn't even really have anything to really bring to the reunion. She was just pretty much there looking like a loofah. So Tamara can go or maybe just bring her back as a friend of the show next season. But bring in somebody else new. She really didn't bring anything to the show. And I hated her pink lipstick and made her teeth look yellow um yeah so that was my review on bell collective um now that bell collective is gone off i will be doing reviews on ready to love the new season starts next friday so be looking out for reviews on ready to love i love you guys see you on the next one bye